Hey, good morning. I'm Charles Brady from the Space Shuttle Columbia, Mission Specialist Number 3. And I'm standing in front of today an experiment developed by Dr. Reggie Edgerton at the UCLA-LA Laboratories. It involves measuring arm, wrist, and hand strength. It is well known that in space, over long durations of time, our muscles and our bodies grow weaker. It's felt, however, that the hand and wrist and arm muscles stay essentially the same. Here aboard Columbia, myself and my crewmates are going to accurately measure exactly whether or not this is true. This device I have in my hand right here accurately measures our hand, wrist, and arm strength. It's plotted out on the graph here and given a, uh, a curve which we can a exactly duplicate over time. We measure this pre-flight and four times in flight and post-flight. Basically involves grabbing the hand grip dynamometer and squeezing in various levels of contraction, ranging from 10 to 100 percent. These are later plotted out on curves that we're asked to follow in graphs that spike and we're asked to trace these. This will give Dr. Edgerton and his assistants all the data that they need to accurately measure whether or not the muscles in our wrists and arms continue to stay the same or grow weaker. Thanks for joining us aboard Space Shuttle Columbia today. And we'll be continuing with some uh, examples of muscle and ball experiments in the succeeding days. Thanks. Welcome aboard Columbia and STS-78, the Life Sciences and Microgravity Space Lab, or LMS for short. My name is Rick Linehan, and I am the MS-1 on the flight. And this is ALFI, short for Astronaut Lung Function Experiment. Now, ALFI is the brainchild of Dr. John West, Ann Elliott, and Kim Prisk from UCSD, University of California, San Diego. And it is designed to measure the physiological processes of gas exchange in the human lung on Earth and in space or free fall. Now, there are discrete differences which will occur in space, and uh, there are four payload crew members who are participating, as well as the orbiter crew members in ALFI experiments throughout the 17-day LMS flight. And what we hope to uh, ascertain from these experiments is how the gas flow rate in the lung changes due to microgravity or free fall in terms of how gas dissipates or, or uh, aligns itself in the lung. Now, when we learn things like this, we'll be able to predict uh, how the lung will function, obviously, in space, and uh, we can use that knowledge to determine how things should function on the ground. And with this information, we can also hope to understand various pathological uh, processes which occur in the human lungs, uh, different diseases uh, that we might be able to study when we have better controls. And additionally, we'll use this information for long-term stays in space on the space station and hopefully for long-duration space flight, uh, maybe one day to colonize the planets. All this information uh, will be put to use in one way or the other uh, for long-term space flight and stays on space. Now, this uh, rather debonair suit that I'm wearing is now called the Mark I mod of the RIP suit. And RIP, uh, basically, it's a respiratory plasmithography suit, which will measure our rib cage and abdomen contractions and expansions while we breathe. And this is measured over on our Alpha KDT here, and with that uh, signal that is routed to the ground, the PIs, Dr. Elliott, Dr. West, and Dr. Prisk, we're able to determine differences in how we expand our chest and how our muscles function in space when we breathe. It's a very, very important experiment and one of the uh, best experiments, I believe, to fly on the uh, SLS series flights. We're going to get a lot of good data from it, and I'm really excited to uh, uh, to be able to participate in this experiment. Thank you.
you, Mark. I'm delighted to be speaking to you today on the occasion of Canada's 129th anniversary. To you, Your Excellency Governor General LeBlanc, to the Right Honorable Prime Minister Chrétien, to my fellow astronauts, to all the other distinguished guests there today, and to all Canadians, je vous envoie à tous mes meilleurs vœux à l'occasion du 129e anniversaire du Canada. Actually, I'm not that far away. I'm 280 kilometers, but straight up. And in fact, the last time I looked, we were just about to head over Hawaii, which, from my perspective, is not that far from Ottawa. Je suis fier de représenter le Canada au sein de cet équipage qui regroupe des hommes et des femmes situés et tellement dévoués à leur travail. And the Canadian Astronaut Program, as well, is, uh, has the same type of spirit as my uh, group of Canadian, of my group of astronauts here on board the Life and Microgravity Space Lab mission. I'm proud to be a member of the Canadian Astronaut Program, and uh, internationally, they're also quite well respected. Bjarni Trigveson, one of the Canadian astronauts, has recently been selected for a payload specialist flight. Julie Payette and Steve McLean are recently announced uh, mission specialist candidates. And Dave Williams has recently completed his mission specialist candidacy is now eligible for flight assignment. I'm living an incredible, extraordinary experience on board the Space Shuttle Columbia. This is probably the highlight of my career as an astronaut and of my personal life as well. I feel very privileged. Mark Garneau, who is there with you today, can tell you all about that. De mon poste de la fenêtre de la navette, Je vois une grande partie du Canada. En fait, ce matin, j'ai vu clairement les villes de Windsor, Toronto et Ottawa. Je sais que le météo y fait beau aujourd'hui là. J'ai donc le privilège de souhaiter à tous les Canadiens, d'un bout à l'autre du pays, une très belle fête et en ce 1er juillet. And I believe I have the best seat in all the house to wish you well from my view here of Canada from coast to coast. I share with you all the pride and joy of being a Canadian on this Canada Day. I'd like to thank all the organizers of the Canada Day festivities, and now I'll turn it over to Governor General LeBlanc. Columbia, this is uh, WBBM. How do you hear me? WBBM, loud and clear. We're ready for your questions. Uh, tell me about uh, you're, con you're conducting medical tests up there and scientific experiments. Um, if you might give me an outline, first of all, of, uh, of what kind of science experiments. I understand you have a lot of critters up there, rats and fish and such. Well, we do have some rats on board that are being used for an adrenal gland study, uh, but they are taking a back seat to the primary life science experiments, which are the human experiments. Uh, we've got four people on this flight that have volunteered to dedicate their bodies to science, if you will, and ever since we launched, and even before then, we've been taking data on these guys uh, from start to finish. They've been doing some circadian rhythm studies, which means that their body temperatures have been measured and their sleep patterns are being monitored. In addition, they're being uh, uh, monitored for their moods and their work performance. On top of that, these guys are also giving blood and saliva samples to contribute to a metabolic studies, which are very comprehensive and, and very complete. And on top of that, we've got a lung function experiment, which uh, is helping us understand the mechanics of the lung in the very basic sense. Uh, we, you can get some data up here in microgravity that you just can't do on Earth as far as that experiment is concerned. And actually, all seven members of the crew are participating in that experiment. And uh, one of the workhorses of the life science aspect is the torque velocity dynamometer. We have four separate principal investigator teams that are studying the musculoskeletal system. And uh, everything from very basic uh, muscle function studies, uh, everything down to the microscopic level, these guys have had biopsies on their legs before and after the flight. 
And uh, with all that complete data on the muscles, we're going to learn quite a bit about what happens to muscular structures as we launch into space and stay there for extended periods of time. And that's the life science aspect. Would you like to hear about the microgravity side? Well, tell me a little bit more about the, the reason you're doing that in part is uh, conducting a lot of these studies is because of the concern about atrophy. When you go up into space, you don't have gravity so that, uh, that you have problems then with your muscles or at least the potentiality for problems. Is that right? Well, when you don't have your muscles up here, it's really not a problem until you go back to some gravity field to try to stand on the surface. And on the shuttle side, we haven't had many problems per se because the shuttle missions themselves uh, don't really last longer than two or three weeks. And that's not enough time to incapacitate anybody. In addition to that, we're also doing exercise up here to prepare for the return to Earth. What's the most interesting part of that whole question is what are we going to do when it comes time to travel to Mars? And the trip to Mars, as we currently have it scoped out, is going to be approximately one to two years. And that's quite a bit of time. If you would like to get out and walk around on the surface of Mars when your spaceship arrives, you've got to make sure that your muscles are in good condition. And that's what we're trying to capture with these studies, our preventative measures in order to understand how we can do things in the future to keep people from being incapacitated for long-term space travel.